before I go into the reflection of the Word of God that has been proclaimed to us and throughout uh, the world in the Catholic Church. I would like to thank you for all the prayers that were said in the Archdiocese in your parish with the occasion of the Synod of Bishops, a meeting convoked by the Holy Father calling delegates from all over the world, bishops, to reflect on the new evangelization and the transmission of the Christian faith. <laughs> the Pope, in his journey, in the many years as a Catholic, as a director and a leader of the Catholic faith, helping John Paul II for many years. And since he was elected, he was observing what was going on in the world. He must be one of the persons who has a clear picture of the world because of his jobs and ministries. And he came with the topic of the Synod, which will be at the core not only of his years already as a Pope, but in the years to come that the Lord will allow him to be with us. It's a crucial thing, the new evangelization. In other words, we have noticed that um, we have been quiet about passing on our faith. Basically. Now we are told that our we should be more private about speaking about our faith and living it out. Before nobody told us, but we were kind of private. How I will go and knock the door of a neighbor and to just bring the good news? That's not, that's not Catholic. So the Pope came with his new synod that took place uh, in the month of October, and, um, and how we need not only to know the titles of our truths, but to able to know them, to reflect on them, and to pass them along the way, and to, and to be creative. How the little ones, how the young people, how couples who are struggling, people that don't have jobs, people who are sick, how they are going to receive from us, from you, the good news. The evangelization is the same, because evangelization means Jesus Christ. The good news is Jesus Christ. But what is the new evangelization? is to find new ways, new methods, to be creative and the new contexts. It's different when the first Pentecost, by the power of the Spirit, the people who know Jesus they were on fire to go out. All the crowds, they were in the different realities in which we are today. So who will do it? We will do it. We have to be very creative. I'll tell you something that happened now. But after the elections, there were some people that were really angry, and they called to my office, and they blamed the Catholic Church, and they blamed me. And for a moment, I said, I didn't know that I have a, that power to name a president. My goodness, it's just nonsense. We want people to be responsible of themselves. Let us educate them day by day, passing on the values, and then people that will be able to be informed to do whatever their conscience is telling them. So the same thing is about the new evangelization. It's not after the programs or now our new building, which is beautiful, and we're going to bless it. No, my brothers and sisters, it's about 
How will we understand the values of the faith based on the scripture, no in particular devotions? The devotions support the truths of our faith. How we're going to articulate them, to pass them on, to talk about them in a very systematic way. And the devotions are a way to fire the heart and to come and worship the Lord. Devotion to Our Lady, to the Lord, to a saint, etc. Sometimes we are so hooked on, on the peripheral. The key are the truths of our faith. And then let's live them out. And pass them around. And be creative. So in that context was our reflections. We were 263 bishops and from all over the world. So to see how the truths are the same, the sacraments are the same, the core of our faith based on the gospel is the same. But the realities are so different. Here we have a full church, literally full. One bishop from the Middle East, he said, I have 35 families in my diocese. And as I am speaking to you, only one Catholic is left because they have been pushed out because of their faith in Jesus Christ as Catholics. And many other, other Catholics have been killed. Very different reality, isn't it? Religious freedom, liberty has been taken away. We are starting that discussion, as you know, here in the in our country, and we'll be up not to the bishops to negotiate. It's up to all of us, because you are Christians in the Catholic Church, as I am. And if we want religious freedom, we will have to work together and develop a conscience of how to be able to give our lives, our time, our talents, our treasure, to give ourselves, whoever wants to be my follower, needs to deny himself or herself, pick up her cross, his cross, and follow me. So with this context, the Holy Father wanted us to bring hope to us. And he's very hopeful, really. Maybe we need to be persecuted in order to react, in order to stand up for our values. So I just pass on to you the greetings of the Holy Father. He wants to build that hope for all of us. And we want to carry on and to listen to him, the vicar of Christ. So uh, it was, there were beautiful days, very challenging. And in the midst of those three weeks, if you recall, there were two doctors named by the Holy Father for the level of the world, run from Spain one from uh, Germany. There were seven saints, two from New York. There were uh, cardinals. So very fruitful. We need to see the church beyond. Beyond family, beyond our parish, before our own preferences in the church. To, to see the larger picture. The church is alive because the Lord is the Savior, because the Lord is risen. I pray for you every day at least two, three times at the tomb of St. Peter. In the little breaks, I went to pray at the Basilica. All the meetings were held right there at the site of the Vatican, the Vatican City. And uh, thank you again for your prayers, for your faith. Thank you for saying yes to the Lord in the church. Again. The readings today is a voice of the one crying in the desert, prepare the way of the Lord and make straight his paths. When I was reading and preparing my homily for today, I thought, I don't know if you I wear, where is the, well, most of you must know where the pastoral center is, where I work, is in Woodland Avenue. 
Well, that would on Avenue. <laughs> and you go to Germania on that side, it's even worse. Really, how difficult it is to drive in those places? To walk it must be complicated as well. Well, this has been one of the classic images of Advent. The voice in the wilderness echoing through the valleys and plains, calling us to look to the east and to open our minds, hearts, and souls. The Savior is coming. And He's coming again and again because we need His presence again and again. Well, the image is certainly striking. It is not just an image. It is a call to action. God is calling His children to prepare the way for the Lord, to fill in all the valleys, to level the mountains, to make crooked paths straight. Prepare the way of the Lord. Yes, you know, to prepare the way of the Lord will be and aligning ourselves to the thoughts of Christ, the mind of Christ, the actions of Christ. The world cannot stay the same, and we know it. And even if we want the world to stay the same, it will not. And so, or we let other people to take action with other ways of thinking and other actions, not necessarily according to God, or we take action. And we do it. So prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight His ways. The world cannot stay the same because the Lord of the universe is coming in the flesh to set His people free. It's no wonder we hear such joyful words from the pro prophet Barak in the first reading. Up Jerusalem will be like up San Antonio and stand upon the heights. Look to the east and see your children gathered from the east to the west at the end. So that the word of the Holy One will be with you. This is a celebration of the marvelous power of God at work in the world. All of the barriers to God's saving power are put down. All the dark places are filled with gathering light. And there are dark places in each one of us, no matter how great we think we are as individuals, there is some darkness there. But the Lord wants to be our light. In our families as well, little things here and there, in our jobs, in our parish community. I'm not talking about things that we like or we don't like. I'm talking about feelings. Feelings come and go. And this morning you get up and you say, oh my goodness, I can stay in bed, just a cup of coffee and get a big blanket. Ah, my goodness. It's a feeling. Objectively, it's greater to be with you than to be with a wrapped with a blanket this morning, right? I hope it is good for you to be here. It's, it's greater, but so we don't go by feelings, even though feelings are very important, but they are not leaders. You know, they are followers. So, clothes, eyes, and hearts are thrown open, and the light fills the world. The scripture tells us God is leading his people in joy by the light of his glory, with his mercy and justice for company. What a tremendous work our God has done in the world. We sang. We sang. Think of how the truth of the gospel has shaped history. People are accepted, some they don't. But the, the gospel has shaped history over 2,000 years. And the 2,000 years before the gospel in preparation has shaped the world and humanity. How he has changed the world around us. God continues to shape us and call the world to conversion today and we are witness to these miraculous things. But my sisters and brothers, the changes do not stop out there. The call to change the world includes a call to change ourselves. 
John went throughout the whole region of the Jordan proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. Because there are mountains and gorges in our own hearts and souls that need to be made level. We put up barriers in ourselves against the coming of the light. If Shabir is an heir to the kingdom of God, and the king is coming. Isn't that something? We used to go to places in which we'll be with windows that you can see the garden, the pond, the little lake. You want to have a view. And now, you, well, I, I have never been in, but I have passed by in some places that a lot of people going to have fun, they don't have one window. Have you seen those places? Isn't that a little bit crazy? <laughs> to be inside. At least now it's prohibited to smoke, but you can imagine what even inside of those places, no windows and people smoking, dancing, and oh my lord. <laughs> and I don't mind the dancing, but, but well, I, well, so, are you ready to receive the light of the world? To enlighten your own life, our society, our church? Are we? Are we ready to receive Him? I echo the words of the Apostle Paul to you today with a great love. As your shepherd who is here to serve and to love you. I pray always with joy in my every prayer for all of you because of your partnership for the gospel from the first day until now. You are partners in the spreading of the gospel. But you also have work to do. What are the mountains that stands in your way of seeing the joy of God and the truth of his word? What are the valleys that separate you from your God and from your brothers and sisters in this world? What crooked paths have you wandered that have taken you away from holiness in the Lord? Whatever your circumstances, my friends, I tell you now is the acceptable time to prepare the way. Sometimes we let the darkness convince us that we are too far gone. We think we cannot be helped, we cannot be saved, but nothing is farther from the truth. The Pope told us when I was visiting with him in Mexico in May, Benedict XVI said, evil does not have the last word. Death does not have the last word. Sin does not have the last word. It's the love and the mercy of God. So I am confident of this, as we heard by St. Paul today, that the one who began a good work in you will continue to complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. You already bear the marks of God's love. He has already begun the work of the gospel in your heart. He has put his word there and planted the faith within you. He cares about you. He loves you. Allow that faith to grow and flourish. Let it shine within your life for all to see. Study your faith hard. Pray hard in solitude with your family. Do works of love and mercy. Nothing stands in your way but yourself in both valleys and mountains. But this cannot stand against the gathering light of salvation because darkness does not have the last word. No matter what is the light of the world, Jesus Christ. As you were praying, you were praying earlier for the year of faith. 
we are God's people. The love of God will not be denied. So do not stay in the darkness. Stand upon the heights. Every single day of this Advent season, work to draw closer to the Lord, so that when we celebrate His incarnation at Christmas, the light of life will shine all the brighter in you as a witness of the faith. The Lord has done great things for us. We are glad indeed. My brothers and sisters in Christ, this is my prayer. That your love may increase evermore. And more in knowledge and every kind of perception. To discern what is of value. So that you may be pure and blameless for the day of Christ. Filled with the fruit of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ for the glory and praise of God. May Our Lady, the Immaculate, the one without sin, so she was totally oriented to God, pure, the pure see God. And when we see these little babies, they become so attractive. We feel attracted to them. Purity. May Our Lady of Guadalupe, as a mother, bearing Jesus Christ, the light of the world, be with all of you. Walk with Mary, and you will not miss the Lord at Christmas Day. <laughs>